Hello scientific writers! Today I would like to talk to you about some more tips for making scientific posters. Recently I looked at 200 scientific posters and I tried to figure out exactly what it is about them that makes the poster good or could be better. I had a previous video where I looked at 100 scientific posters and I made a snap decision on whether I would stop and talk to that poster author or not. And I wanted to really figure out beyond the main reason what the other things were that I was seeing on that poster. And I came up with a list of criteria and I also made a checklist that you can use when you're making your next scientific poster. So let's look at that list. The first thing on the list is that I want to see the visuals telling the story. Now, of course, you're going to have figures and you're going to have tables. For the poster to be very effective, it needs to be built around those figures, tables, or photos, or other graphics that you might have. It shouldn't be that those graphics are supporting the text, but that the text is supporting the visuals. So I want to see the story being told with the visuals. Next, I'm looking for a clear organization and evenly spaced columns. So if you're using columns, and most posters should be using columns, make sure they're spaced evenly, they're the same width, or you know maybe the center one is a little bit wider than the outer ones, or vice versa, but even in that case, make sure that they're spaced evenly. I can see instantly if the poster is off, if it feels unbalanced. And if it does, it makes me wonder, do I want to stop and talk to that person? Because if the poster's not organized, I might not get an organized presentation. And so I probably want to keep walking. The third thing I look for is white space. Is the poster too crowded? If it doesn't have at least 25% white space or that space between figures and tables or paragraphs, then it's too crowded. Now the white space may not be white. If you have a blue background, it's blue space, but we still call it white space. I also look for the poster being not too complicated. So if it looks like it's going to be a lot of work for me, to figure out what's going on, even with the person explaining it to me. You know, I'd probably rather spend my time looking at two or three other posters than being stuck at that one poster for that amount of time, trying to figure out what's going on. If it looks too complicated, I'm probably not going to stop. I also look for a pleasing color scheme and good contrast. So pleasing doesn't mean that it's my favorite color scheme. It can be someone else's favorite color scheme. That's fine. We all have different likes and dislikes, but it means that the colors are not clashing with each other. They're not hurting my eyes. The contrast is enough, but it's not too much. I'm also looking for a non-distracting background. I want to be able to see the figures and tables clearly and distinctly from the background. So if the poster author has chosen a background that's interfering with my viewing of the figures or tables, I'm probably not going to stop and look at that poster. I'm also looking for posters that don't have too much text. I'm not going to a poster session to stand and read posters. And if the person is presenting it to me directly, they're not going to just read the poster to me. So why have all that text? Make the text minimal, you know, let the visuals tell the story. I'm also looking to see if the figures and tables or other graphics are large enough in proportion to the poster. So can I see them clearly from two meters or six feet away? And also I'm looking for a title that grabs me. So a grabby title is going to be interesting or it's going to be fun. It's going to get my curiosity. It's not going to be the same kind of a title that I will put on a journal article. As I already mentioned, I looked at 200 posters to compile this list. I also evaluated each poster on each of these criteria and I gave it a grade of pass or fail. This is the site where I got those 200 posters to look at. This is the F1000 research gateways and collections. A lot of the posters were coming from two different scientific fields and then I got other posters from other fields. I feel like this set of 200 posters is representative of the posters that I have viewed over my 20 plus years of going to conferences and looking at scientific posters. So here's how they scored. Each of those 200 posters was scored for each of those criteria. If it passed it got a blue square and if it failed it got a red square. You can just glance over this figure that I exported from my Excel score sheet and see the pattern of pass and fail. Let's look at how that quantifies. 
The criteria that had the highest failure rate was the grabby title. So most of the posters in this 200 had titles that were pretty boring. Uh, they were really titles that you would see on a journal article paper. So they didn't grab me. And that was about 70% of the posters that did not have a grabby title. The next biggest problem I saw was not having enough white space. And we had about 56% of the posters that failed the 25% or more white space threshold. The next biggest problem was clear organization and even spacing. There were about 53% of the posters that did not have clear organization or consistent spacing. So by that I mean I wasn't sure the order in which I was supposed to read the poster or else the columns were not even or there was one giant box that went all the way across the poster and then columns underneath that or some kind of combination of those things. About half of the posters had too much text. Now actually I was a little bit surprised. I thought that this percentage would be higher but it is something that you should look out for when you're making your next poster. Make sure you don't put too much text. The next biggest problem was also surprising to me. I didn't expect that 45% of the posters would fail having a good color scheme and contrast. What went wrong with the color scheme was usually that they just had a plain white background. And this plain white background is just not very interesting. Black text on a white background. The figures or tables might have had a little bit of color, but not really enough to make up for that boringness of a plain white background. There were a few that had too much contrast or colors that hurt my eyes, but mostly it was just too boring. About 40% of the posters failed in the category of visuals telling the story. So when you're making your next poster, make sure that the visuals are telling the story rather than the text telling the story. About 26% of the posters were too complicated. That's a number that was a little bit higher than I expected. They probably should have thought about simplifying the message or taking some things off of the poster. Only about 11% failed having large enough figures or tables, and only about 8% failed having a non-distracting background. So 92% of the posters had a background that was not distracting, but again, a lot of them did not have a good color scheme. Okay, these were the criteria that I scored, but I also thought about some other criteria or other details that you need to take into account on your poster. Let's look at that list. So these are details to keep in mind to have a good poster design and layout. Out. First, make sure your text is large enough, and this includes your figures and tables. But in addition to the size, make sure that you use a font consistently. Choose one font, use it throughout the whole poster, and make your formatting consistent on the poster as well. And make sure that font is readable. Clarity beats cleverness. Don't choose an artistic font thinking it's going to look better. It doesn't look better, it's just harder to read. So go with a nice, plain, sans serif font that's easy to read. In terms of the logical layout of your poster, try to make sure that you clearly state the research purpose or the research question or the hypothesis that you're addressing in your research. You know, that's the heart of your science. So make sure that you put that on the poster in a way that's very clear to the viewers. Also break down that purpose question or hypothesis into the objectives that you carried out to accomplish answering that research question. And then when you get to the end of the poster, have conclusions. Don't have a summary, have conclusions. And those conclusions should address the objectives that you presented earlier. And they should also answer the research question or purpose or hypothesis that you proposed earlier. All right, I hope this was helpful. I would love to hear from you. If you have comments on posters or questions about posters or other aspects of scientific writing, you can leave those in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them or make videos in the future on those topics. If you like this video, please leave me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the Scientific Writing School YouTube channel for more videos on scientific writing related topics. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time and happy writing.